this video is the final video in covering all the different methods that are used to exchange most common holiday lighting data. Now, this focuses on the top level where we're actually exchanging data between devices. So what is the final level of communication? So if you followed our previous videos, we use the example of speaking English or Spanish, and that would differentiate between the different methods of transferring data. This is more about the individual components within a language. So if you're speaking English, both people have to agree on specific words, and they have to both understand those words. So, if you had somebody using words, let's say of a technical nature, that another person couldn't understand, they can't communicate even though they are speaking both the English language. So, what we have to agree on is a certain set of words or communication methods that we're going to exchange data on. Now, this is totally separate of anything related to the Cat5 cable, the network cables, the interfaces like RS-45 or Ethernet. These are sitting at the top. So let's go back to one of our diagrams here. So at the bottom down here, uh, we can have, for example, CAT5 cable. And then across CAT5 cable, we can have Ethernet. Oops, I'm sorry. Ethernet or RS-485. And then above Ethernet, um, we can have TCP IP. That's how we actually exchange the data. And then above this, we have our protocol. So there's a little bit skewed, so we'll skip out this section right here. And then we have the high level protocols. We have things like E131, ArtNet, and others. Then here we have the LOR protocol. Then we have uh, DMX 1990. Now, I should also mention that E131 is, and ARTNET is, technically DMX. And that's E131, which is the DMX standard for basically DMX over TCP IP. And so we have DMX 1990, and we have older uh, technologies um, beyond that. Uh, other ones like Modbus, which are not related to holiday lighting. Okay, so we split them off. Now we're talking only about this right here. How are we exchanging data? And how does it differ from, let's say, these? All right, so some interesting connections between these. DMX1990 is called E111. So if you look up the standard, it is E111. And it's often referred to as DMX1990. And that lays out the standard for the addressing. So it has to do with, there's 512 channels, and within each channel, there is 256 bits of data. That's how many bits of data we can turn on and off uh, to get your levels of, uh, I should say 256 levels of data. So we can dim the lights, zero being off, for example, and 255, if we're using zero as our start, uh, is all on, right? And somewhere in between is, let's say, 128, and it's half on. Now. Whenever they did the DMX 1990, they said, that's great, we're using RS-45, it's a great technology, it's super cheap, it's great, it goes long distances, and we're only controlling uh, hundreds of channels, which at 512 channels, they thought, oh, geez, this is enough forever, right? This is going to be plenty good. How many channels could somebody possibly need? Well, fast forward from the 1990 to 2019, and now we need thousands sometimes tens of thousands of channels. So they said, let's create something new. Now, ArtNet actually got started because the industry said, hey, we need some solution. We need something to fix this problem because we got thousands of channels and we can't keep using this DMX 1990. And we want to use all this new modern technology, TCP IP, with all rage now on the internet. We want to use that. What did they do? They came up with this standard and it was released. And 
What happened was it wasn't really agreed to by everybody. There were some different variations. Um, people interpreted it differently. It wasn't completely 100% perfect, but it solved the problem at that time. If you remember back in the early days of wireless, you may have noticed similar technologies where people were releasing technologies before they were ratified or approved, and they were not always 100% compatible. Not so much a problem now today because we have good standards. Well, along came the standard E131. And again, notice the number differences. This is E1.31, this is E111. So E131 is an increase, an extension, if you will, above the original DMX 1990. This means that there's still a lot of connections back to the original method. This is why on E131, we have 512 channels still. Now, that doesn't mean that we have a limit there. We had before one network. So one cable can only carry 512 channels. Then they introduced something called universes. Unfortunately, it's not probably um, that applicable because uh, we probably should be talking about something on a larger scale because we have about 65,000 possible universes. So you get 65,000 times 512 and that's the number of possible channels that could exist on one piece of Cat5 cable running over Ethernet, running on TCP IP, running E131. So, um, I won't go into the details. Yes, you can roll them over so you can use one universe and you'll see controllers such as this that have, you know, a thousand channels on one single uh, cable output. So you'll have one connection here and it'll have a thousand possible uh, pixels, which is actually 3,000 channels. And so um, there are some more complexities in the way that rolls over. But you can see that they've con connected these two. This is an extension. They didn't completely start from scratch. Now there is another protocol called DDP, which is totally new uh, and is completely um, different from these. And it's kind of a clean sheet protocol. Now, so originally we got ArtNet used mostly by the entertainment industry still to this day. Uh, they kind of standardize it, so if you're doing concerts or uh, Broadway shows, those devices, if they're not E111 or DMX 1990, will be ArtNet, typically, and a more prominent protocol because the holiday lighting world started later in the 19, or 2010, 2011, adopted the standard at the time, which had just recently been released, E131. So this is based on a newer protocol. So you'll see most of these possible. Now, that said, these controllers, such as here, a Hinx Pix Pro, or let's say our here, we've got an Evolution controller. Those have the ability to actually talk both protocols. So they're bilingual. They can be configured to talk um, different protocols, like ArtNet or E131. So in this particular case, the Hinx Pix Pro can talk ArtNet, E131, or also referred to as streaming ACN or SACN, S-A-C-N, and DDP. As where, for example, the um, Holiday Coro Evolution Alpha Pix only talks E131 and ArtNet. All right, so that is the differences between these protocols. Now, let me throw in one little other unique thing here because this is common, and this has to do with multicast versus unicast. So we have unicast, and we have multicast. So, what does this mean? Una, one, multi, many. And that's exactly what this is. So what happens is, is that if we go back here to this, and we go back to this network layer, we normally want to send data to very specific addresses. So we say from this device, let's say that has 192.168.0.1, and it's gonna send data over here to 192, dot 168.0.50, right? And so this application, whether it's Xlights, Laterama, uh, Madrix, whatever it may be, 
you say, hey, I'm gonna send data directly to this IP address with this universe and this DMX channel, and the data goes over. And it's only sent directly to this device, and this device only receives it. Um, now, in, in there's some advantage to this. This is very efficient because we're sending the data directly to the device we want. Now, that means, of course, if you have a whole bunch of these, like 51 and 52 and so on, that means that you may want to instead use multicast. And what happens here is we just basically yell out. So if you've ever been to the DMV and it says, now serving 58, now serving 59, they're not coming around to you and finding you. It's not like when you go to the restaurant with a buzzer and it buzzes just your little buzzer. So what's happening is your PC with its application, such as a sequencing application, is sending data out. Under a unicast, you're going to say, all right, I'm going to send this to 192.168.0.50 and I'm going to send it Let's say again, we're using, let's say, E131. I'm going to send it on to universe 1 and DMX channel 1 through, I don't know, 100. So, we're sending that data directly. So, if we have another controller up here that is 192.168.0.52, it doesn't see this data. And so if even it is configured with universe one, it will never see the data because that data was sent only to this controller on this IP address, specifically to these universes. Now, what we could have done is we could have said, what about if we use multicast? Well, if we sent the same data out, it would have gone to both controllers. And if we said, turn on universe one and DMX channel one. Guess what? Both controllers see that data and they say, universe one, channel one, that's me. And this one says, universe one, channel one, that's me. I do something. Turn on the lights, most notably. And so that data goes out to all of them. Now, this can be an advantage, it can be a disadvantage. It can make troubleshooting complicated because if you're sending data out to all of them, you don't know exactly what's configured. So you have to keep very close track of these devices and what they're receiving what they hear. Because you could have one that you turn on one and you think this other one's two and it actually is still turning on. And it's actually one, universe one. So, uh, the advantage is that you don't have to configure each individual IP address. Just long as the network, in this case, let's say we have 52, 53, 54, long as the network's the same and we're outputting the data to all the controllers, all of them hear the data at the same time, at that layer, and they will all listen to it, and they simply just parse it looking for their universe and their channel. And if they get that and it matches to what their configuration is, great. They do something with that data. So, um, there could be some pros and some cons to uh, multicast versus unicast. Generally, my personal preference is unicast. While that does force you to make a full understanding of what you're doing, it does generally result in less errors because you know I'm sending this data to this controller and this specific universe. Uh, again, multicast is easier. Just say multicast, everything out on the network just listens and as long as you've got the right universe and channels, you're all good to go. All right, so that concludes our section on the application layer, including the protocols like uh, DDP, SACN, which is also E131, and ARTNET. Uh, we didn't go into DDP because it's not that common of a protocol at this time, uh, but it has the same kind of addressing situations that you would have with other protocols.